Uh, oh. oh, there we go. We're on. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> We're on. We're live. Um, this is session two of the Mary Abattoir. Uh, it's actually the first session of the actual Mary Abattoir story proper. I want to begin with a few preliminary things. So one quick note. Um, you're each going to have preparation. You'll have the benefit of the prepare move. I'm going to pull that up real fast. You're really smart of me. Let's pull that before I begin the broadcast, but that's okay. <laughs> These days, sort of. Okay, so there's a move, there's a special move called um, Bolster. It's the very last move on this special move sheet. When you spend your leisure time in study, meditation, or hard practice, you gain preparation. If you prepare for a week or two, you get one. If you prepare for a month or longer, you get three. Uh, so you will have three preparation, which you can go ahead and note on your uh, on your character sheet. And I lost that link because I had to refresh the window, so I'm pulling it up again. There we go. Yes, yeah, so you have three preparation. Uh, I, I'm just going to copy over this little. Uh, bit over here, and I'll just uh, paste it over in your spot there, Alvar. I think you're the only one who doesn't have it. There you go. Um, whenever you want to spend this, you get a bonus on your roll. Um, you can add plus one to any roll, and you can choose to spend it after you do the roll. Whenever you use it, I'm going to make you guys narrate in flashback, like the preparation that you engaged in to give you this bonus, right? Kind of like how Blades in the Dark does like their little preparation, you know, flashback bit. So just keep that in mind. You have that as a resource that you can spend. We are typing a word in here for you. We are going to be doing this adventure. It takes place in a town called Eingavida, which is a town of very bad repute. Um, black markets, smuggling, um, human trafficking, just lots of bad business, thieves, guilds, nasty, nasty people, okay? Um, this session that we're doing today is the journey to Angovada. And so some of you, actually, everybody but Maria, I think, has played in sessions of mine before where we're doing like a journey to somewhere. So you kind of have a, a sort of sense of how the beats are gonna go here in terms of like, there's gonna be Undertaker Perilous Journey, there's gonna be some time at camp. It's gonna be a chance to kind of get to see the characters in this context of a journey and how they interact with one another. And so I want you guys to take a look at your flags and we should talk really briefly about any flags you think that might be um, might be good to try to hit while we're on the journey, particularly flags that are conversation based, like things that can happen at camp or like on the road are really good here in this context. So take a look and let me, uh, we'll just give uh, that a second. Go ahead. Marie, I, I have to, I have get me to speak of my life beyond our mission and trust me with a secret. We will n never tell anyone else. Perfect. It's a great, great flag for the road. I love that. Anybody else want to highlight a flag? I was thinking about changing my obscure history one to something about like um, ask me what I think is going on with the the church and the keepers and the things. Okay, cool. Yeah, like something real specific. Yeah, well, or just like something something vague but hitting on that each time. Um, well, the flag is more specific is what I mean. Like it goes from oh, being yeah. like ask me about a vague history past yeah to like yeah this is more but that's sorry that's yeah that's what i meant mm. um i think that's cool uh elfar or archon anyone yeah you want to <clears throat> yeah um i actually i didn't change a flag i just kind of reworded it a bit just so it fit a little bit better um so i so um the one with uh, is assist me in destroying someone's most treasured possession i just reworded that as uh, assist me in destroying someone's most treasured possession in order to help them let go of their worldly attachments 
Um, and that'd be something that I kind of got got a, got the the chance to do to do that last time, but not really. So that'd be something that would be good. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so Arkham, what do you think? When we sit together at the campfire, I might be willing to talk with you about the idea of friendship. And if you had friends in your life, and um, what friendship means to you. If we are on the journey itself, I'm more interested in the flag which uh, asks me to point out a forbidden place so I can get my hands on it. I love that. Sight distraction. I think that would be a. Um, I think the trailblazer part of the journey might might have something there for you guys. Uh, so we'll see. Um, good, good. That sounds great to me. Any other last minute questions about characters or what we're about to do before we get going? Um, I changed the flag to ask me about my history with the church, hunting the keepers, or my heritage in brackets. I'm a bone man. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, I love it. And just uh, in case anybody here doesn't know what that means, um, Weary normally appears like a normal human being, but he is. Um, He's actually a bone man of Carcosa, at least in terms of his like racial heritage. And what that means is his true appearance when he's not, when he doesn't have shadow court glamours, his true appearance is that of a person with perfectly translucent skin and muscle um, and, and blood. So all you see is just guts and, uh, and skeletal features, right? So, um, I don't know how often you show that to people, <laughs> Weary. I don't even know if you're able to, but um, it's a nice detail. All right. So you're on the journey to this town, Eingavida. Very, very nasty, nasty town. Um, you are, we're going to start with a fight. You guys get jumped by a bunch of gnolls. Is anybody here know what a gnoll is? It's a D and d monster. For those of you who don't know what a gnoll is, it is a, it's a, a bipedal uh, jackal humanoid, okay? They have like jackal heads. I have a picture that I'm gonna put in the little drawing thing for you guys. I thought they were hyenas, but whatever. Hy yeah, hyena, that's what I meant, yeah, hyena, sorry. Yeah, jackals would be, um, are there bipedal jackal people? I don't know, they're hyenas, that's right, the laughing ones. Um, let's see here, I often get those two animals mixed up. Yeah, hyena men. I've got a picture of a classic looking knoll there on the image board for you guys. Weary, if I'm correct, you have that move that makes it so that people can't take you by surprise, right? That's right. <laughs> right. Okay, that will serve you very well in this context because basically what it means is you will all be able to get your weapons and get into a battle stance um, right, like, like in time before them to like jump out. Okay. Um, oh, Chris needs a link to the board. I'll link you there, Chris. Let's see here. Boom, 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 boom. Boom. There you go. So you're going to have time to prepare. And for you, Weary, that means you'll also be able to, like if you want to slip into the shadows or whatever, you can do that beforehand as well. But here's what you're up against. There are six gnolls, um, seven total, but six of them are clearly like the sort of uh, beta gnolls, right? Um, they, um, they're all like armed with like kind of like sharpened bone weapons, like clubs and, and short swords and things like that. Um, some of them wear furs, some of them wear like makeshift bits of plate and chain mail. Um, they come out just like, just like yapping and howling. Like, I don't know what, a, I don't know what a hyena sounds like, but it's kind of like a, a laughing bray, right? That they kind of make, and they just, they just make this cacophonous noise. They come out of the brush, like surrounding you guys. They have a leader. You know he's the leader because he's bigger and he has a big pink mohawk, right? Um, <laughs> and so he, and, he, and he's also got like two big fucking swords. He's got two big metal, like proper metal swords, okay? Um, they are, they're coming out from every direction. Um, I wanna just go around the table and find out what your, what your initial disposition is, and we'll fire off moves uh, whenever it seems appropriate. So, Weary, you have to jump on this situation. What do you do? Um, I think I'll do like a really sharp whistle, like when you call your horse to you to make everyone wake up. And as I do that, um, you're, I'm you're probably. Walking, so, yeah. Pardon? You were just walking. You weren't at camp or anything. 
They just they just oh. jump, they just jumped you on the road. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll do that like loud whis whistle to call like attention to danger, and I think I'll make my way up like a tree or something. Awesome, cool. I love it. Uh, let's go, and you can be up in the tree, no problem. Elfar, what about you? Um, I think Elfar would immediately start um, praying to his deity, uh, deity on Shar to uh, for protection. Nice, awesome, love it. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, roll that if you want. Sure. Just get on the table and let me know what it was. Yeah, sorry, we need, to, we need a roll for your party room. I can do that real quick. I'm going to uh, roll for your party thing here, you guys. The name utterly full magpie. So. All right. Uh, I got a six. Ah, okay. Um, well, go ahead and uh, just mark that XP. We'll get to you in a second. Archon, what are you doing? <laughs> Unless you want to burn one of your preparation. Archon, what are you doing? I expand my senses and see what kind of colorful creatures are would be attackers. I want to ask additional questions about the scene after I have like something like a dif uh, um, discern reality. Oh yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, I'm into that. Um, that's great. Uh, let's see here. So what you what you're you are going to be? Let's see here. Yeah, you can be peering through the veil. That's no big deal. I think you're kind of always doing that whenever you want to. Um, otherwise, you're just trying to like, are you trying to discern something about their motivations or something about like what's driving them or like something about something helpful in the immediate situation as they're attacking? Like what kind of information are you going for? Yeah, there's one, uh, I have one move which offers me to also ask on a supernatural level who is really in control here. Ah, very good. Yeah, I'm into that. Yeah. Uh, that sounds great. Uh, you can be doing that. Uh, I might give you a DR. It kind of depends on how the fight goes, if you get attacked or not. Um, Geiska, what do you do? What are you going to be doing? I'm going to stand a, at a defensive position so I can easily protect my close, my uh, the nearby allies. Mm, yeah, go ahead and give me a defend roll. Let's get that going now. All right. You might have a great opportunity here with Elfar in a minute. So. <laughs> Let me double check. My con is 13, so plus one. Seven. Awesome. Uh, let's see, on seven, I think you got what, one hold? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Let me tell you what's going on right now, and you're going to be aware of it as you're kind of, guys, as you're kind of standing in defense. Um, three, so Elfar has been like, as soon as like he got the word, like I'm imagining Elfar kind of like, you know, went to one knee and began like trying to invoke the gods. Um, Geiska, you see three of these gnolls. They just like they are just like they're just like they're just about to swarm Elfar. Like Elfar is like focused on his prayer, and they just like come out of the brush, and they're just like they're going after the person who looks most vulnerable. And he's on one knee, <laughs> so <laughs> that's what they're doing. Um, what do you do, Geiska? I will spend my hold to redirect the attack to myself. I like that. Um, just describe like how do you interfere? Basically, I I see this, and then I get into, I basically go intercept the attack. Okay. Uh, okay. So with my shield. Oh, got it. So you can like put yourself between Elfar and them. Uh, you yeah. can give me a, a hack and slash if you want. Hack and slash. That's an eleven. Nice. Um, if you narrate uh, being able to hit more than one of them, I'll let you hit more than one of them. What does it look like? Um, I s make a broad swing with my okay. sword. Nice. It's huge, so <laughs> it, <laughs> it just, knocks just them cleaves, back. Cleaves across. I'm into it. it. Uh, cleaves yeah, it cleaves across, and since it's big, it can probably hit multiple enemies. I love it. Roll your uh, damage. Uh, give me six. Uh, Oh, not to this XD then. And I think it has piercing. Let me double check. Piercing will help. They have armor. So. Yeah, they have two pier It has two piercing. Messi is forceful. Okay, awesome. Cool. How much damage did you get? You might kill them. Four. So. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, they have six hit points. Um, they have two. They have two remaining. Do you want to like expose yourself to get that extra D six roll? Sure. 
since I was exposing myself anyways, it makes sense in the Yeah, picture. yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can go ahead and roll that extra d6 just to see if you take them out. Ooh. Okay, that's enough. Um, so they're gonna attack, they're, basically it's just gonna be like a melee, like you're swinging at them, they're stabbing at you. Um, they're gonna do a d8 plus two, so roll a d8 plus two against yourself. Um, Ooh, then. So yeah, well at least they got the, they got the hits in, I guess. Um, yeah, uh, I have three armor. Okay, yeah, armor counts. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, describe killing all three of them, though. Yeah, I, it's like I said, it's a mass, it's a, a big melee. I cleave them. I, it's bloody. It's a bloody mess. Do the <laughs> messy, and they're and bits and pieces are flying everywhere. Elfar, when you look up to realize that um, you've been, uh, that, that, that Geiska stepped in and kind of like defended you here, what do you say, what do you do? I, I, I thank the god Anshar for sending Geiska here to protect me. <laughs> indeed, indeed, that might be the extent of what you get for your prayer, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> prayers are answered. Um, Archon, there are three regular gnolls and one leader gnoll remaining. Um, I think the leader and all is stomping right toward you. Like, I know that you're like, you know, you're expanding your consciousness and I'm going to give you the benefit of that, but, uh, later, <laughs> but for now, what do you do? Uh, very good. I was hoping that he's coming into my direction, um, because I like his expression and I know the, also know that the creatures of destruction are strong with him. Uh, so I can learn something from him or her. And, um, so I let them get as close as possible. Mm -hmm. Before I increase the level of anxiety, everybody who walks into battle, even Nolls, have mm -hmm. to maximum. I put the, I shift it up <laughs> to 100, 150%, which works like my telekinetic strike move. I love it. Go ahead and roll it. 11 plus nice. 2 is 13. Very good. R roll your damage. That is three. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, he's still up, but just describe what it looks like. My eyes are getting bigger, and so are his eyes. And we both have to take a deep breath in because I can feel the pain of anxiety he is feeling like rising from his body. Doesn't seem to stop him, but I'm ready to take the blow. Nice, nice. Um... He's not gonna. He's. I mean, he's. I think it. Come, I think it could probably like is enough to like. You know, he's. He approaches and you kind of like. You basically kind of knock him off balance a little bit. He might come in for another attack momentarily, yes. but weary, forceful, and messy. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. That'll push him back. That's perfect. Uh, weary, you see. There's the other three gnolls. Okay, you're. You've kind of seen all this happen from from your vantage point. Um, one of those gnolls breaks off to run after Archon. Archon's totally exposed because Archon's focused on the big guy. The other two gnolls rush forward toward Elfar and Geiska. Um, what do you do? Um, I think I'll just go for the one going for Archon because Geiska seems to be able to handle three at a time. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You haven't revealed your position yet. So if you want, you can just you can just get the benefit of the backstab um, if you wish. So. Um, sure. With a bow yeah. arrow. Right. Yeah. So like um if I want to do more damage, then I have to roll, right? You have to roll it if you want more damage, yeah. Yeah. They have they yeah. have six hit points, so you might be able to do it on one roll, but I don't think so. Not the way I roll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll I'll try rolling for it, I think. Okay, go for it. Let's see. I got eleven. Nice. Uh go ahead and uh, you do you want to do the extra damage on him? Yeah, I'll, I'll take the extra damage backstab. I think that makes it a D8 and a D8. Choose so. two. So you, I don't get into melee with them. Oh, nice. And you deal 1D6 extra. Go for it. How or much plus total damage? Let's see. Uh, seven. So good thing I did that. Nice. That, that takes them out. So describe killing him. Um, I think what happens is... Um, in the, in the the rush, the we see the camera zoom in on the the hyena person, and they keep getting like obstructed by things. So I think <laughs> Weary um, like 
shoots an arrow against the wind and the wind takes it and then it's like a trick shot that comes like up and over and right into its head. <laughs> Rick yeah. from, from up, up above. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. Love it. That's good. Uh, Elfar, uh, as just as you're getting up, you know, get maybe like you're kind of getting up off your knee and like, you know, and, and Geiska is just, you know, just now ripping through those other three knolls. Uh, you, you hear the two yapping and howling and braying at you um, coming in direction. What do you do? Um, <clears throat> I, uh, uh, Alfar pulls out his, uh, he sta he stands up and seeing as this is probably the extent of his prayers for the, how is, of how much his prayers will be answered for now. He pulls out his sickle, turns around and, you know, and, uh, screams, uh, battle cry in Dwarvish as he, uh, engages the, uh, two gnolls. Nice, nice. What weapon do you use? Uh, he uses a, like a hand sickle. Oh, nice. Go ahead and we'll hack and slash. All right. Right. Uh, let's see. What do I have? Well, that's a six again. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Um, all right. Go ahead, Mark and XP. You rush into battle. Um, I think basically what you're not expecting is they're kind of like lumber they're, they're down kind of low like kind of like yelping and howling and kind of lumbering at you what you don't realize is they're kind of like spring loaded in their legs right so as you run forward they just like spring forward and like just like tackle you and you go down in a in a ball of like just a ball of like fur and and bone and and, and nastiness right um they're both down on top of you um one of them proceeds forward towards you, uh, Geiska, like, like just just like keeps going, like rolls forward right towards you. The other one has Elfar pinned down. And he doesn't just have Elfar pinned down, he's got a bone dagger that he's pulled out of his boot or his little legging. And he is like, he's holding that bone dagger up to, to Elfar's throat, basically getting ready to cut Elfar's throat. Geiska, the situation is one is rushing towards you and Elfar is in incredible danger right now. What do you do? I'm going to rush towards Elfar. Okay, awesome. Um, if I cross paths with the knoll that's uh, running towards me, then I'll I'll just use my sword to cut him and then cut the other knoll. <laughs> nice, nice. I like that. I think what's I think what it's going to be is um, I think to get to Elfar quick enough, you're going to have to basically just like disregard that other knoll, no matter what he does, and yeah. um, to to, okay. to to take this other knoll out. So you're going to take his damage ultimately, which will be a D8. But you can right. you get a free hit on the one that Alfar's on or that's on Alfar. All right, I'll roll my damage first. Okay. Well, actually, the null's damage first. Yeah. Six minus three, or it's not. I'm no shield, right? Uh, no, no, no shield. Okay, uh, so that's twelve HP current. <laughs> And let me roll and then two piercing five. Nice. Um, doesn't take him out, but it does stop his uh, cutting, <laughs> uh, cutting um, Elfar's throat. Archon, you you used your telekinetic strike to force the to force the guy back. So there's a little bit of space between you and the captain of these gnolls, right? This is the gnoll Alpha. Um, he surprises you by basically dropping his two blades, uh, except they're on chains. Um, <laughs> he drops them, they're on chains, and he begins just like swinging these like blades on chains, like at you, um, so that he, you're in his reach, but you're not, but he's on yours. Um, blade Blades on chains are coming at you. What do you do, Archon? Interesting. He feels dominant in this situation. He does, he's he an he, He's <laughs> sure he has me under control. I give him the opportunity to to delve into that feeling mm. because I want to see him as well surprised. <laughs> okay, nice, nice, nice. Are you I, are you just cool with the blades coming at you? <laughs> um, I'm I'm just cool with the blades coming after me, um, but um, I want to I want to send him. Um, another of my strikes, but this time okay. I want him 
to follow his blades. I want to like forcefully push him into my direction that he comes together with his blades to me. Okay, nice, nice, nice. But I'm ready to take the blow. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, <laughs> Weary, you have a good handle on the situation. You see the Alpha swinging the blades at Archon. What do you do? And Archon looks like he's uh, like just charger. standing there like a crazy person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the blades coming right at him. <laughs> I think I think we get like a like a weary doing an SMH thing. <laughs> and then um, I think he, he, we're going to aim to um, pin the Knoll's foot to the ground with an arrow, like shooting at the foot. Interesting, interesting. Defy the injured dexterity. Let's see. Well, and I just took the move that is, uh, I get the best thing on that. Um, Evasion, when you defy danger on 12+, plus, you transcend the danger. You not only do what you set out to do, but the GM will offer you a better outcome, true beauty, or a moment of grace. Wow. Uh, true beauty. Go for it. Describe it. Um, you have full I think, control over the situation. I think I do like a, another trick shot, and maybe what happens is as the the arrow goes flying up into the air. The camera like follows it, of course. And then as it comes back down, um, it pierces maybe the one of the chains that's mm. like twirling the, the stuff. And then it also pins the uh, oh, nice. Noel's foot to the ground. So he's just completely like all of his forward momentum. <laughs> he's just, and he's just like caught down and the, I think the chains just tangle him up. Um, he's, he's completely exposed, completely vulnerable. Archon, what do you do? I'm looking to Weary's direction because I know my friends. I can trust them. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yes, and this shake, shake his head move is like his way of harassing our friendship. I like that. He's <laughs> doing that so often to me. Um, I run to him, the alpha whatever, and give him my embrace. Mm, good. My embrace of deep feelings I have for this alpha. I, I, I love it. I love it. Um, what would you like to know? Which what move are we firing off here? I'm firing off two things. I give up one focus as soon as I touch him uh, mm -hmm. to, to enter his mind. And the other one is the touch of agony, where I can, if I touch somebody, use my telekinetic strike move mm -hmm. in the hack and slash. So I can be hack and slash with everything, all the text and everything, like, but my I think because of his extreme exposure due to Weary's really cool move, um, I think you'll mm -hmm. be able just to take him out, just to kill him straight up. So Let's go. Uh, no roll required, but you will get still you still get the benefit of the telepathic connection though. So what are you looking for? What kind of information? Well, I I want to know in which uh, like if anybody has sent him, if anything is still in his mind, if he be, if he betrays by somebody because they didn't expect us to be that strong. Mm. So, what is his last strong feeling, which is beyond fear of death? The thing you're going to learn is that he doesn't really understand why they attacked you in the first place, oh. and what he believes. What you deduce is that one of the other gnolls, not him, is was actually in control of this little mission, kind of pushed them to do this. Okay, that's what you learn. Speaking of the other gnolls, uh, so Elfar, you're on the ground. This is the way it looks. You're on the ground. Uh, there's basically one. Of, there's two gnolls left, right? One gnoll, like basically jumped on Geiska's back and began stabbing her on the shoulder, him on the shoulder. Geiska, like. Nevertheless, moved forward and smacked, you know, smacked his sword into the one that was on top of you. He's still straddling you, but you're, you know, you're a dwarf with your hands. That can be dangerous. What do you do? Um, hmm. He's still, he's still straddling me. I kind of, uh, grab, I kind of grab one of his legs to knock him down on the ground, and I'm just going to kind of reverse the situation and kind of roll over on him and then just start, you know, attempting to strangle him to death. Nice. I'll take it that as hack and slash. Go for it. All right. Oh, that's a nine. Nice. Um, okay, so I think this is what's happening. Um, I think you're gonna like reverse the situation and and be tumbling with him, and and you'll be able to choke 
choke the gnoll. Give me the damage roll and see how much damage you do. He's almost sure. dead anyway, but or he's hurt a little bit already. Uh, two. Uh, I'll take that. that. That's enough to kill him. Um, just and then while he's while you're choking him out, he's gonna have a he's gonna he's gonna kind of grab that dagger that kind of tumbled to the side, and he's gonna try to just gonna jam it in you for a D eight. Jam it into your side as best you can. Two as well. Uh, let's see my armor. Okay, so I take one of that through armor. Okay, uh, just describe uh, killing the small. Yeah, just. Um, Oh, you know, just after after everything happens, and you know the Noel's distracted, but he's still straddling me. He, Alfar, just gets this look of anger and just pulls the Noel to the Noel to the side. He forgets that his you know sickle is even laying on the ground, and just it just starts you know, and the Noel is just kind of stabbing him in the leg, and he's just you know just until you yeah, 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 just yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice, yeah, strangling him until he just in until you know he. Till he stops making that infernal laughing noise, indeed. Uh, guys, you have a you have a knoll on your back um, who is just like jamming his like his like he's got like a little kind of sharpened bone dirk. He's like just jamming at your shoulder as best he can on your back. Uh, makes it kind of hard to use your sword and shield. Um, what do you do? Uh, drop my shield, grab him, yeah, and try to yank him off my back, and then cleave with my sword. Nice hack and slash. All right. Eleven. Nice. Roll your damage. That's two to piercing. Uh, two with two piercing. Okay. Uh, he's not down yet, but he's he's on the ground. And as you've described it, that's the way it happened. Uh, Weary, you can see the situation seems like it's under control. Um, there's the one null that guys is getting ready to take out on the ground. What do you do? Um, maybe I shout like hold so we can interrogate him. Are, are they intelligent? Like, can they speak? Uh, they may not speak your language, but yeah. Oh, right, right. Hmm. Um, you actually don't. Well, and I mean, yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, there's nothing wrong with wanting to interrogate them, I guess, as a general matter, but, uh, yeah, you don't necessarily have the information that Archon has, right? So. Right. Yeah. Um, well, you do know that Archon can get that information. Right, exactly, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, maybe I'll just shout Geiska hold. Uh, we can interrogate him, or Archon can interrogate him. <laughs> <laughs> Mind blast him. Psy blast. <laughs> yes. Uh, Archon, what does it look like when you finally end the Null Alpha's uh, suffering here? What does it look like when you kill him? I am. Um, we're both sinking to our knees. Mm -hmm. And another time, like at the beginning, we first saw each other looking into each other's eyes. And then I bat him to the ground and let him fade away. And I'm together reading about his ancestors and like morals, what they think about when, when they have a loss. He's thinking of his kids as true as humans do his kids to be eaten by wolves because it's the best way to die as it seems interesting okay but now it's time to let him go <laughs> nice 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 uh, what's the physical process that happens like does his brain just melt or something or like how does he actually die possibly i'm not an uh, uh, anatomist so i don't know what actually happens in the brain <laughs> okay, nice. um but um my archon believes that he is restructuring his mind, mm. which right. might be the same as melting a brain. Yes. Nice, nice, nice. Um, there's enough of you to where you can surround this remaining knoll and capture him. I'm not interested in litigating that with dice. Um, you, give me an adventuring gear if you want to tie him up, or if you just want to pin him down long enough for Archon to go into his brain, that's fine too. Uh, it's up to you, you guys. Yeah, we'll just pin him. So. I have a question. The whole time, are these things kind of like, like laughing, like Lion King people? Yeah, yeah, they make like hyena, like like yelping, laughing sounds. Yeah. Okay, and but that's like normal, right? They're yeah. not like taunting <laughs> us. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's just their normal like war cry kind of sound. Gotcha. Yeah. So, um. Well, so you have him. Uh, 
I think I'm just gonna in the interest of just kind of like like I don't I don't want to dwell on this too long. I, I think I'm gonna kind of tell you what is kind of going on with him. Um, Archon, you're gonna establish telepathic control with him, correct? Yes. Okay. You're going to have a vision of this knoll. Um, you see. It, it's a vision in the Knoll's brain, but for whatever reason, just like in TV, we see it like, you know, from from the from some omniscient perspective on the Knoll, right? Um, we see the Knoll um, like on a slab being held down with shackles. And we see um, pairs of hands around him, human hands. And one of these pairs of hands takes a a brand and they they burn something they burn a symbol into the knoll's palm and he just howls like 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 sounds like a like a dog in like terrible pain um as they burn this brand into his hand and then the other there's another pair of hands that slips something um kind of slips something into the like like inside of like the little like inside the like fold of his armor right they kind of like you can see they're clearly putting something in there you'll see all that with given time to like explore his mind with that information what do you do well while we interrogate i'm i'm talking constantly so because i can easily forget what i have seen because i focus on other things Right. So everything is shared with my friends. Maybe they can already have a look and find Paul. this. Yeah. Paul, yeah, and the others. Um, might weary, it's, it a, well. it's a phantom court symbol. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, I think Weary w would say we should show pity and release him then. Uh, I'm going to try to look for the thing that was stuck in his armor or yeah, yeah. put in his armor? Uh, it's a key. Um, it's a key. I'll just give you a, a simple description. Um, it's a key with a very, um, you know, it's a key because it's got like little teeth, you know, it's clearly like key like, but it's also very unusual metal working. Like it doesn't seem like very simple metal working. It's quite complex. Like the, the both the fineness of the teeth of the key as well as the sort of strange geometric shapes that make up the the handle of the key that has a name that part of the key i can't remember what it is um but it's definitely a key of some sort all right i'm going to use my magic to figure out what the deal is with the key using my star magic and uh, illuminating what it what it's supposed to be for yeah i like that That's since nice. one of my m magic alignments is to uh peel back the veil so yeah, that's good um and in fact um uh, so so assuming that i'm kind of imagining the fiction that like your, this is part of your like your sword is yeah. like sort of the font of your power here yes um what does it look like when you use your sword the magic from your sword to sort of like reveal the true nature of this key well the first starlight is in the sword right right it's it starts glowing once it's being used to uh for magic basically mm -hmm. so yeah, um yeah. you just kind of like pass it over or like or... yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah, pass okay. it over yeah. like and... a uv wand <laughs> like yeah, yes yes uh good roll cast a spell or whatever the role is that you have um... it's an intro roll. yeah uh, let me go here. It's a nine. Nine. Okay. I'm, so, I'm, uh, do I want to spend? I'll spend a preparation. Oh, good. So, okay. Because I've been I've been practicing my magic since I got it, so it makes sense to spend a preparation here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead. You get that'll bump you up to a ten. Just give me like a flashback scene of you, like learning how to utilize the power of the sword like it's an in, it's an indeterminate amount of time between like mm -hmm. the last adventure and, and now yeah. so you can kind of play with it if you, as you wish but. so uh i'm thinking since the key also has hold on me mm -hmm. uh it 
it whispers something if it can whisper it does it, it, and in fact it does we'll talk about that in a minute yeah, yeah. it whispers something and i and after that night i start practicing magic with the sword okay so it kind of like tells you like yes it kind of like tells you the way things you have to do that's good so you're yeah. it sounds like you're constantly kind of like speaking to it to some degree yeah yes uh good um so on a 10 plus it's gonna work uh which you yeah. still have to choose one though i think uh let me look yes uh i'll take minus one on going to int okay until um, i catch my breath yeah good 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 you're going to discover that the key is actually an artifact of the shadow court. Okay. So phantom court people presumably burned a brand into this Knoll's hand, which we can deduce had something to do with why the Knolls attacked you. And they slipped an artifact of the shadow court onto the Knoll's body. Hopefully, I assume like hoping you would all find it in case it, if it came to it, right? Um, it's an artifact of the shadow court. And I think you know this because as you move the as you move the sword over the um, over the key, it creates like a it creates almost like a pattern of like light motes over the key that looks like the constellation that is sacred to the shadow court. Weary, what is that constellation that's sacred to the shadow court? Um I don't know much about constellations. <laughs> All like, I can think or, about or, is like what do, they, what do they think it looks like? Like what kind of animal or, or figure do they think it looks like? Um, well, it could be like uh, a constellation that looks like um, that that shield, like with the the sun and then the eclipse going over it or whatever. So oh, like okay. two circles, like eclipsing each other. Got it. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, you see that constellation, and that's how you know it has something to do with the Shadow Court. It's some kind of Shadow Court artifact. Elfar, do what I... are you doing during all this? Um, he is because he's got the you know the brand burned burned into his hand. He's got the uh, Shadow Shadow Court artifact. I think that he is. I think he's going to try to invoke his god to, because I think that Alfar's not sure of whether or not, say, they put that in there to make to make us think that you know, basically to throw us off the trail and think that the Shadow Court did it, mm -hmm. or if they want us to find it and that it's going to do something to us. Mm -hmm. So I think that he's going to invoke uh, invoke his god to um, contain the power so that it will not negatively affect us. Uh, contain uh, the power of the key. I like it. I like it. Is that? Um... Divine um, work or something, or what are we doing here? Yeah, I, yeah, I guess. Um, or an invocation, I suppose. Yeah, I guess. Guess. Yeah, invocation. So I guess. Yeah. So it would. I, I guess he, it would really be more for the worshippers. So I guess he would be doing it to protect himself, so that he <laughs> okay. would, at the very least, would remain unaffected. Okay, I'm into that. Go ahead, Mullet. All right. Eleven. Nice. Um, I think you're just going to have the blessing of your gods. Um, I think that basically your gods will kind of like, I think what's going to happen is your gods will basically set you apart from whatever Phantom Court v. Shadow Court fuckery is going on right now, right? Um, and if the key does have some sort of like malignant purpose, I'll alert you to it. Okay. Weary, um, or, or, or Gaiska, do you tell Weary that what you've discovered? Do I know that Weary is of the Shadow Court? That's an unclear thing. Who knows, Weary? Do we know this? Um, I don't think I'd be telling people that. <laughs> <laughs> do you mention out loud, Gaiska, that it's an artifact? Yeah, I the mentioned Shadow it out loud. <laughs> I mentioned it out loud. I just, I would have mentioned it specifically to Weary if he was, yeah, yeah. if he, if guys can do that. But I'll just say it out loud. Yeah. Well, you have the information then, Weary. What do you do? Um, I say, 
if he is of the shadow court, then he must just be a pawn. I say that we just give him his life and let him flee. But or of the Phantom Court, but yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> However, Mother... what do you all think about this key? Looking at the at the shadow court key. Um, um could I about yeah, lore? lore. Yeah, about lore. Is that uh, intelligence, right? Intelligence, yeah. I'm starting to get it after like <laughs> six months. <laughs> like, no matter what you tell us, it's another lie you will tell us. And we will believe hey, it. Hey, maybe I've changed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. Uh, uh, seven. Seven. I have to tell you something interesting. Another lie. Shadow key, these keys that are sacred, sacred or they're artifacts, I don't know if they're sacred or not, but um, this is a key to a shadow vault. And a shadow vault is basically an important time or place, um, an important moment, really, in shadow court history that the shadow court has managed to put in like stasis and close off so they can try to manipulate it later. Well, that sounds cool. Um, yeah, I, well, I think try that all... That, just out of um, maybe, maybe I, it's like similar to preparation where there's like a, a flashback and I'm being, I, I imagine my training is either like that ho hardcore uh, like we're on stilts doing action stuff or it's like a Catholic boarding school. <laughs> and we're like, you know, the nuns are teaching us things or something. Um, nice. Yeah, so I think I just um, have learned it through book studies, which were mm -hmm. like, you know, doctored regular books that would um, teach us like the alternate history of, of the Shadow Court kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah I love it. Do you guys want to do anything else in this scene? Are we good? Yeah, like he, I'll just say that I think he was a pawn and his purpose is to deliver the key. So I don't think he needs to pay for it with his life since he was the one being twisted to do this. Or they, her. I agree. Agreed. Sure. Go, you can let him go and he'll, he'll run off. Um, he'll kind of give you like a nasty look as he runs off and kind of snarl a little bit but then but then, dis I, but then disappear into the brush are you sure he's not happy about it because he's <laughs> laughing <laughs> i know that he's not happy about it because i'm still in his mind <laughs> uh, you will learn that he he does intend to run away and never come back so <laughs> he shouldn't be a danger ongoing uh good we have a journey we have a four-day journey from this point to the town of and, and I've got some questions for you all, um, some establishing questions for the adventure. Let's go through those. And then once I ask these questions, we'll take a break. Archon. One of the most malignant spirits that you are aware of, or maybe your order, or whoever you, you know, whatever, whatever teachings you follow, one of those, the most malignant spirits that you're aware of lives beneath Angravida. Uh, what color is the spirit? What is its nickname? And why do you want an audience with the spirit? Think about that. For, for Elvar? You have a long, complicated relationship with a local in Eingavida. I mean, really complicated and far back. I want to know who that is and what the nature of it is. And for Geiska, your sword has whispered to you that you are being hunted it is being hunted, but that means you are being hunted 
by Star Beast Geminos. I'll type that in here. Star Beast Geminos. And he has whispered a clue that you can use to know where Star Beast Geminos is. Uh, presumably, it's going to try to meet you halfway. It's going to try to like jump you or encounter you uh, when you get to Ainovida. So there'll be some kind of like physical detail or some kind of detail in the environment that will let you know that Starbeast Geminos is near. I want to know what it is. And for Weary, Angavida is one of the few places in the world where members of the Shadow Court uh, walk about openly and do not hide their true identities. And in fact, uh, there is a Shadow Seminary in Angavida where pupils are taken to be trained. What business do you have with this particular shadow seminary in Agavada? So let's take a quick break. Let's take a five minute break, okay? We'll come back.
Sorry, it was a little longer than five minutes. <laughs> right. Are we still waiting on Garrett? Garrett, are you with us? Yep. <laughs> Garrett a minute. Uh, just housekeeping stuff while we're waiting on Garrett. Um, uh, keep your hit points the same. Uh, as long as we're on the journey, they are whatever they are at the end of the the, the null fight. Uh, but of course, if you have um, bandages or poultices and herbs or anything like that, you can apply those. Yeah, and um, Alfar can actually can also uh, cast uh, Divine Ward and he can, oh, he yeah. can actually heal. So. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to do that? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll go ahead. And um, Geiska took a lot of damage, didn't she? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. defending me of all people. So. <laughs> <laughs> Payback was. Good so, yes. Yeah, let me cast divine ward here. And this is why yeah. you don't roll for in that time. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Is it not good? I take it. <laughs> uh, no, I, I rolled a four. Uh, does it have Snake any? Snake eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess preparation won't be very helpful here. <laughs> no. <laughs> Unless you want to blow all three of them, I guess. But. Um... Well, you can only use one preparation per roll according uh, to the bolster move, so yeah. you can't even <laughs> do that. So, yeah. I think. So what is your god a god of again? Remind me, like harvest or something? Yeah, he's kind of like a uh, god of the harvest and death. He's kind of like a really he's a death god by but he chooses who he wants by um, you know, how he divides up rain. So if mm. you so, you know, if he's satis so if he's satisfied with uh, the amount of death that there's been, he gives you rain. If he's not, he gives you famine. Mm. I'm going to let you heal Geiska completely up to full hit points. In exchange for this, um, your god requires a sacrifice of food. I think um, I think you have to you have to be the quartermaster. Okay. For the journey, and at some point you have to surreptitiously um, despoil or otherwise offer up the food to the to the land. Okay, and you have to, and I think this is a sort of I think this is a sort of like religious test. Your God wants to see you make this trek, make this journey like um, with hunger in your belly so that you are ever thankful for the, the bountiful blessings in the future, right? Um, okay. Can't be thankful for food and harvest if you're not hungry, so. Now I get, yeah, now I guess here's the question. Do I, ha do I have to do it surreptitiously? I suppose because, not. Um, <laughs> because I guess I could. Because I guess I could give that the choice to Geiska to just say that I can, I can do this, but this is the price. Oh, I see. And I got it. That makes sense. Um, that's a that's fair. I I, I think that's fair. Um, you, you'll know this. You know, communing with your God. Um, you can present that option to Geiska. Like I can heal you. Not, I can heal you with divine power, but basically, my God wants us to starve. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean. I'll be fine. I, are you sure? I, I'd rather not everyone starve because of me. Which is also because of you, Elfar. <laughs> <laughs> I give him that look that <laughs> that it that I really mean you, but I don't want to say it. <laughs> um okay, good. That's fine. Um you are still hurt though, Geiska. How would you go about handling that? And um, nothing XP, if you didn't before. Yeah, I'll tough it out until <laughs> until it's I until can. You, until you can rest. Um, oh, I have bandages. I have four bandages, so I can give you one. Yeah. Okay. All right. That'll How heal. much do bandages roll? Heal? Uh, they heal four hit points. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Awesome. Um You are traveling to the town of Angavada, a 
the behest of the church, as usual, not to hunt a keeper. Instead, you are going to intercept a key that the church believes is going to be trafficked in Eingavida. You are to intercept this key. And if you can bring it back, they'd love that. If you destroy it, that's fine too. In typical cryptic church fashion, no matter how much you press them on it, your contact will not tell you what the key is. They will just say, but they will say most cryptically, trust us, you will know it when you find it. They will say something even more cryptic. Everything you've experienced has led you to this moment. You will know it when you find it. And they send you on your way. <laughs> gather your gather your people uh, and go and and and, and go forth. Um, I go on. Was is the best? <laughs> so it's a four day journey to to this town. Um, I need a trailblazer. I need a quartermaster, and I need a scout. When do you want the answer to the questions you asked? Later. Okay. Um, quartermaster, scout, trailblazer. Who's it going to be? Um, I'll still be the quartermaster. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> Keep your eye on him. Um, <laughs> who's going to be the trailblazer? Um, I can... Um... Yeah, I'm good with doing either of those, whatever. If, if, someone choose, else... if you choose Trailblazer, I'm going to ask you to fill in a lot of world fiction. If you choose Scout, I'm going to ask you to pick the danger that you might run into. So. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll do the world one then, because I don't know anything about D&D &D creatures. I literally thought <laughs> were like dwarves. So. <laughs> this is an educational experience for you, then. Yeah. Um, okay, so where is going to be the Trailblazer? Who's going to be the Scout? I'll be the scout. Okay. That sounds great. Trailblazer. <clears throat> I need to know. Tell me about a landmark or other feature uh, of the environment or the geography that you're using to navigate by. Is there a history associated with this landmark? And if so, what is it? For the scout, what are you most worried about encountering on this stretch of the journey? What are you trying to avoid? For the quartermaster, one of your companions does something that you find extremely annoying. What is it? One of them does something you find surprisingly endearing. What is that? And for Geiska, who does not have a job, the boss of the town of Eingavida is neither human, dwarf, nor elf. In fact, you've heard rumors that the boss of Eingavida is something completely unusual and or monstrous. What rumors have you heard? Whoever Sorry, okay. I was I was reading uh, Garrett's thing. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, so I was going to say, uh, your question is for the boss of the town of Eingavida mm -hmm. is neither human, dwarf, nor elf. In fact, you have heard rumors that it is something completely unusual or monstrous. Uh, what have you heard? This is like the person who runs the town, basically. Yeah. So whoever's got their answer first on the job, uh, on the on perilous journey jobs, um, just let me know. We'll do your role first. Um, I'm ready. <laughs> ready. Um, for the landmarks, I'm thinking uh, there's like um, stone faces that are like waterfalls, but it's sort of like Mount Rushmore where it's like carved saints uh, are there, but they're oh, crying. Nice. And uh, so cool. like yeah. out of their eyes, the, the water flows. And there's five of those. And when you, um, like they all pool to a central place and that's where we're going to. So I have to like climb up high and look for these stone faces in the water and then look towards where it all flows. And like and the direction right. that they flow. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I like that. Um, so it sounds like maybe it sounds like 
Agnavida is like at the cross currents of these like little rivers that come together into one big river. Is that the idea? Yeah. And like, um, yeah, like the, the idea is like the saints like don't want you to go there. Like they, they weep for you. Oh, they're weeping for you because you're moving to Agnavida. Okay. That's good. I love it. Yeah. That's really good. Uh, is what's the history of those, or is that just the, the the sort of myth? I guess that we need to know. I, th- I think it used to be that they weren't crying before, um, but then the shadow court defaced them so that they would cry, so that people would be able to find them. But if they did, they would be sorry for it. Mm. Nice, nice, nice. So it used um, to be like a um, like a church thing, right? Where people would go there for pilgrimages, but the shadow court defiled kind of, it. Kind of defiled it and made it, yeah, like, yeah, made yeah. It, it's good. Yeah, I like that. And in fact, I think the shadow seminary, it does, it, it is an old church, right? Probably there in, in the town. Good. Um, I love that. That's a great detail. Go ahead and give me trouble to roll. Which is, uh, what am I rolling with? Wisdom. Wisdom. Two, three, six. Four, of course. <laughs> it would have had to have happened sooner or later. <laughs> ah, go ahead, Mark and XP. So your four-day journey might turn into uh, uh, a more-day journey. We'll see. We'll come back to it. Yeah. <laughs> Archon, you're scouting ahead and periodically reporting back to the group. Um, scouting ahead, looking out for danger. What are you worried about running into on this stretch of wilderness? These are stone faces which uh, Weary has described and could tell us a little bit about. It's a lie anyway. Um, so I'm, I'm that pretty much afraid that they are not all dead, so to say. They could act as sirens. Mm. So they put a lot of mental pressure in our heads and normal human beings can resist that pretty easily. But if they all combine, if you stand at the wrong places, like sirens, you could get attracted by them and run into dangerous situations. Nobody knows what happens then. Oh, I like that. That's good. Um, yeah, that's great. Uh, I'm into that. Let me think about it for a minute. Go ahead and roll. Roll plus wisdom. Let's see how it goes. You're muted. Tell me that nine, and I use one of my preparations. Ah, good to bump it up. Because I'm so, you know, I'm before we go on these journeys, I learned to put everything together in my adventuring gear, and when nobody was expecting it, we had these bottles of wine, and I have a screwdriver to open them. And there we go. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Maybe not the most important part, but the one I would like to mention. <laughs> good, good, good. Um. We're going to talk about what happens uh, with that in a second. Elfar, one of your party, mem- one, one of the party members, does something you find really irritating. What is it? I think that um, Weary has gotten so used to lying about important things that he's gotten to lying about unimportant things. Where it's basically <laughs> like, you know, it's like, what, what, what are you doing? It's like, oh, I'm, you know, it's like, oh, I'm just checking my bag and he doesn't have anything in his bag. And then he'll think about it for a second. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm doing this. Or, you know, it's like, oh, what have you got there? <laughs> and he'll just, and just reflexively lie. And then he'll correct himself. But then it's gotten to be such a habit that he'll just lie about unimportant things. Then it's, <laughs> it's just getting, it's just getting on Alfar's nerves. I love it. I love it. One of your companions does something you find surprisingly endearing. What is that? Um, I think that um, through, uh, throughout the journey, like Archon is surprisingly friendly, cares about how everyone's thinking and feeling. He's, you always get the sense that, you know, he always asks it in a very, you know, in his own kind of peculiar way. And he acts it, you know, with an out, he asks things that might be a little bit inappropriate since he's been in all of our heads at this point. Um, but he, he, he shows genuine concern. Mm, good. Uh, roll plus wisdom, see how it goes. Um, so that's an eight. Awesome. Uh, it's gonna take the exact amount of rations that it's gonna take. Um, I'm gonna add a day to the journey from, 
from the trailblazing. So I just need five rations from everyone. Uh, I've got more follow up on that. It's not that's not the only thing that's happening, but I just I need five rations from everybody now. If you don't have five rations, just let me know. Yeah, I don't have five rations. <laughs> Do you possibly have rations from other people you can borrow? Um, he will. Because otherwise your God will take this opportunity to let you experience the pangs of hunger that will make yeah. you more grateful for his assistance. Yeah, I think, um, <laughs> yeah, he, well, he's, he's got four rations. So I just think he's just going to use this last, this last, he, he's going to use this hunger as a, as a blessing into his God. Mm -hmm. Um, let me give you a minus one forward. Um, okay. Because you, you do, you go hungry one day basically. So. Yeah. And I guess I should say, um, I do have enough experience to level. I uh, would he get a chance to do the level uh, up move during the journey? Yeah, yeah momentarily. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, you guys are gonna have a chance to stop here in a sec. So. Oh sure. Um, all right. I'm filling your boxes red just so you remember your minus one forward. That's my that's my technique lately. So that you guys don't miss it. You have managed to not navigate the central river that takes you up to Angavida. You have instead managed to navigate via one of the auxiliary rivers that leads to one of the faces, um, one of the big stone faces carved in the, in the rock. Archon, so that puts you off by about a day. Archon, you because you've got a 10 plus on your scout role, I'm going to give you a fair bit of information here, okay? About what's going on at this face. This is the face of, um, it's the face of St. Murian. St. Murian is famous for leading Crusades into the jungle lands of of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a race of snake men, and she led these crusades into these jungles, slaughtered all these snake men. These they're called John T. Another D and D lesson for Fraser, and um, and that's what she's famous for. Right, is breaking the yoke of these of these snake men over the land. Okay. It is believed, it is believed that within the cave system behind these faces in the, in the, in the mountain face or in the cliff face, um, it's believed that there is an artifact sacred to each of the saints inside these cave systems. And most people, uh, people who know this, or, or strongly believe it, don't go fuck with it because it's like considered really bad like to do that, right? Mm -hmm. But you're going to learn, you're going to learn that the artifact that is that is held inside the caves of St. Murian is going to be of particular importance to an upcoming, um, an upcoming trial that you and your companions will have to will have to engage in and so i you have sensed all of that you can tell me how you know like how, how are you getting this premonition how are you learning this and do you bring it back to the group i know exactly where this is coming from it's coming from the saint mirin herself because she's planting these thoughts into my head to drag us to her. This is part of what I was worried about. And we are not afraid. We will follow her, but not because she ordered it, but because we will be the ones who will end this. And no matter if there's an artifact or not, we will learn something important there indeed. Indeed. I bring it back to my companions. Geiska. You've heard a rumor about the boss of Angavida, that it's not dwarf, elf, or man. Uh, what do you think it is? What have you heard? My sword has whispered to me that he's indeed of the stars. 
Oh, good. He, um, okay. He's an aspect of, let me look it up. Uh, Unukal High. You better put that in the chat for me. <laughs> I will. He's an avatar of the snake's head. Oh, nice. Which, which is uh, appropriate since Yuanti used to live in these lands. He he was one who stayed. Good. So, a being, a, a serpent-like being, connected to the Yuanti in some way. Connected to the star beast as to well. The star beast as well. Good, good, good. I love it. Um, these are rumors. I'll play with that a little bit. It might not be that precise thing, but yeah, it's, it's a good, good rumor to work off of. Good. Do you share that information with the group? Uh, or do you keep it to yourself for now? For now, I'll keep it to myself. It's not okay. super relevant right now. All right, sounds good. Well, so. Archon presumably has presented this opportunity to you all that, that you should all climb it, you should all go into the caverns behind the face of St. Murian and find this sacred artifact that other adventurers and plunderers uh, willingly leave alone. Maybe, or maybe not. Archon, what have you shared with the group? <laughs> One saint, Murian, her name. She's calling for us. She has something important for us to give to us. She might not do so voluntarily, and she thinks she's in control. But whoever thinks so usually makes a mistake, doesn't, don't they? I would strongly suggest that we go there and pick up the artifact. It will there be very important on the journey. Group. <laughs> Role play. <laughs> um. I would be worried that this is another manipulation of the shadow court, perhaps. You know, yes. like we, we we get the the artifact and then to prepare to go there, we bring them an artifact. <laughs> um, are, is there a way for you to be sure that this saint is the one actually speaking and not, you know, the shadow court through her? Hmm. I would even think that it could be part of the conspiracy of the Shadow Court, or any other court, who cares? The right approach to, to make things culminate, to bring it all together. This is how we have done it in the past and how we should do it also, also in the future. So far, we have been successful, haven't we, Weary? Mm. Weary nods and he'll, he'll say, uh... I will go with you, though I do not know the way. <laughs> yeah. These faces could be of interest of you, faceless man. What, which he faces? Must, he was saying these faces could be interesting to you, faceless man. <laughs> oh, but, but, but what, oh, the faces, like the giant faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Gotcha. yeah, if you choose to do this, just so you guys have the scale, like you guys as a group could all like walk through the eye socket, right? Like, Ooh, that'd be cool. Up, right? Like it's, yeah. you, you'd have to climb up there, but yeah. <laughs> it's, Not only the it's big it is, very big, right? Yeah, that needs to happen in the movie, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, I'll go with you. Yes, we need you guys, go. Yes. And just talk. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will provide the protection of Alfar. Mm. And the food. And the food. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. We need food to get there and back where... Uh, at least I'm out of food. <laughs> uh, oh, you have enough until you get to Angabadon, so don't worry about that. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, this is all part but of if the we make a But if we make a detour, then... Uh, no, I'm still counting it. Yeah, okay. yeah this, okay. it's, it's, your food counts for 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 the until okay. you get to Angavada. Okay. Makes so sense. Um, unless you just seriously detour, like if you just abandon the mission, okay, that's different. But <laughs> <laughs> as long as you eventually make your way to Angavada, um, okay. You are at the base of the cliff face that the 
that the, 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 the carving that's supposed to depict St. Miriam is, uh, is in. Um, there is river that flows. Um, it just flows like from some higher place down through the eyes of the, of the thing down into a river that you guys have mistakenly follow, followed basically. And you're there. Um, enormous, uh, not immediately clear or apparent like how you get in. <laughs> um, uh, what's, what's your first move here? Hmm. Um, I guess we could discern realities, but I'm thinking of like an Indiana Jones thing where it's like a test of faith where you just have to like start uh, going kind of thing. That's interesting. I mean, that could be the case. Would I mean, you just look around initially? Yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead and roll discern realities. Which is whiz. Whiz. I failed. Oh, but I have preparation. I, I will spend one preparation to make it a seven. Give me some flashback. Show me. Um, I think it will be. Um, yeah, I, I think it'll be like my my old master that Archon has has seen in my mind trap kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, and he's he is like teaching me about these statues, and he says that you should not trust what your eyes see um, around here, and I think I sort of like stumble a little bit, and and then um, like flash back to that memory and, and get my bearings again. And in fact, uh, we'll ask your question. What do you want to know? You're muted, by the way, if you're talking. Um, but here is not what it appears to be. Mm, good. You, you have that little flashback, you know, like watching your step, you know, keeping your eyes open for, for things in the environment that don't make any sense, right? And you, and you step on a patch of grass that the grass is like, there's a patch of grass where the grass is growing in a different direction or appears to be growing in a different direction than the rest of it. Um, it's about it's about the diameter of like a, I don't know, like a, uh, maybe like, like five feet in diameter, right? And if you investigate that, uh, you'll you'll learn that that's actually just a bit of like, just a bit of sod or a bit of like cover that's been laid over a hole, okay, a hole in the ground. If you lift that up, you peel it back up, the hole is filled, I mean, you don't know how deep it goes, but uh, just beneath the, the the lip of the hole, there are thousands of vipers, adders, snakes of various sorts, just squirming in a mass just underneath this hole. So they're like imprisoned there or they're just, guarding something? They're just there, like oh. just like a pit full of snakes. You can all go investigate it or look at it. St. Quirion crusading the snake, surrounded by snakes. Well, there's a hole in the ground with snakes. <laughs> <laughs> and the oh, spirits of it looks it. quite different, I tell you. <laughs> Um, I can. I think, yeah. Uh, I think I'll turn to Alfar and, and be like, "What do you know of this place, priest? Because maybe you know about priest stuff." I don't know. You know about <laughs> the saints, right? I mean, you have yeah. a sense of the saints. Yeah. Well, anything, anything, anything important to the saints, they they guard with uh, with 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 creatures sacred to those uh, to those saints, and I don't. While I do not worship Saint Miriam, I would assume that these things are these things are her creatures. So we should expect more of them down here. Um, you can give me a spell, Lauren. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, 
my intelligence is. Okay. So that's an eight. And that's including the minus one from hunger. Mm, yeah, you can you can unblock those two if you want. Sure. Something interesting. Just as in life, Saint Mirian had to wade through an army of serpentine yuan ti. So must those who wish to reach this sacred place must wade through a pit of snakes. That's the interesting part. <laughs> I'll just assume you will. Well, you can tell me how you might know that if you have any ideas. Um, hmm. I think that. Um, Think that maybe the original settlers of the uh, the village that Alfar lives in they they had originally worshipped Saint Saint Marian and they uh, and they had to clear the area of um, snakes and the remnants of the of the Yuan Ti before they were able to settle but um, the process uh, but the process with which they did so blighted the land mm -hmm. and the but because but because they uh, did this on divine mission they you know had to stay in that land and cultivate it mm. great so there's a really simple task here you simply have to wade into the pit of snakes and presumably at the bottom of the pit or at the end of it will be the entrance into this cave system I'm sounds sure like, it's dangerous. <laughs> sounds like a priest thing to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Divide the unholy ground for us, Alpha. Yeah, he um Alfar will, I think, yeah, he will let me take let me take a look at his uh invocation move one moment. Okay, um, he is going to attempt to uh, invoke invoke Anshar to um, to clear to clear the clear the the pit of uh, snakes because um, uh, because as a priest you know he wants he he wants to uh, perform sacraments to Anshar not to any other saints mm. so he wants to um, uh, sacrament. The, Make a sacrifice to Anshar, and so he wants Anshar to um, take the food from the bellies of the snakes and the vipers, mm. and uh, just uh, have have him, you know, just starve all of these creatures to, to death in an instant. Uh oh, <laughs> that's, that's ghoulish. Um, I'm here for it, though. Uh, let's see if this works. Roll plus wisdom. <laughs> all right. I still got the minus one forward, so that's plus one. Instead oh, of plus do you, two. you don't. That was that was just a minus one forward, not ongoing. So oh, you, okay, minus you've one already forward. applied. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, in which case, I get a nine. Um, ah, okay. Do you want to bump that or? Yeah, yeah. I will. Um, yeah, I'll. Uh, I will use up a preparation to okay. bring that up to a ten. Um, I interfere. <laughs> <laughs> before he before the bump or, or after because that because well because if you interfere the most you can do is yeah after the preparation yeah but the most but you can bring, do is bump it down, it down like, to seven to nine again it. yes how do you interfere <laughs> is it a subtle interference is it something else well, uh, I think Alpha opened him a little bit too much to me because he was describing how kind and nice I can be, and even if my in my weird ways. So uh, now, Alpha, I'm I'm talking uh, about all the things you have revealed to me in your mind while we were uh, confronting the Starlight Beast. Uh, you remember, like with the human sacrifices and all of that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember that, and I'm calling for the deities which are also up there and also worth being called upon uh, down here to us. Yes, I will. Let's see if that interferes enough. 
So you're, you're, you're mostly just, you just don't trust his, his faith basically, essentially what it boils down to. <laughs> is that yes. fair? That is fair. Yes. Uh, interfere That's... with, with wisdom. Intelligence. With intelligence, I think, isn't it? Well, are, are you are you? It sounds like you were beseeching the gods too. Are you not? Is it something different, or is it more of your? Yes, yeah, but I'm, it's a lot about like it, for me, it's a bit like spout lore. I I tell him everything what is inconsistent, also in his faith. Oh, you're saying that to him? Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's good. Intelli yes. Yeah, intelligence is fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my intelligence is not so high, so. No, I think that's perfect. Yeah. So eight. I think plus zero eight. Okay, that will take you down then to uh, to the mid result. So on the mid result, Elfar, what happens? You have to choose a requirement. All right. Okay. So let's see. Um, the DD demands something in return. So um, he will. Un Anshar will. Um, you know, starve all the snakes and vipers to death after I go through it. Oh, I like he, that. Will, he will yeah, require that's what, that's me, what I was say. Yeah, he will require me say. to do so, but he will not require the the non the others to do so. It's a big ask. It's good. Uh really dangerous. You know that, right, Alfar? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Um I'm gonna I've got a custom move in mind that you basically are going to be subsumed by this pit of vipers that will bite your body and inject you with venoms and you will give me a constitution roll um i think i think i think the i think the the thing that's at stake here is if you miss the constitution roll you're going straight to black gate okay do you still want to press forward with it yes okay very daring <laughs> but i'm here for it Whoa. let's All have right. a con roll 11. Nice. Good. <laughs> you otherwise get the, your, 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 your test of faith is, is, uh, is good. I love this. This is a good scene. Um, so really, yeah. Well, give us that first part, Elfar. What's it like? Um, the snakes all, you know, wriggle around me and they, and they bite me and they attempt to inject me with their with their venom but they just don't quite i guess do, do i still since i got the 11 do i still take a bunch of damage no no you're this good. Oh, okay. yeah. um but they don't really get through my armor which is actually blessed leather armor it doesn't provide any extra actually armor so however the blessings of anshar prevent the well the fangs sink into my skin they prevent it from injecting its poison and every time and every snake that um that pierce that pierces my skin withers and dies as it does so nice nice good and at the end of this for the rest of the group you see elfar at the bottom of a pit of withered snake husks um at the bottom of the pit there is a a little basically a little like cave opening at the bottom of the pit it appears the snakes were just kind of like suspended in this pit, you know. Um, I guess, do you all go down? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, so is it like suspended kind of like, um, like the the vault, like the the thing that you were talking about before, where it would suspend a moment in time. Is it? Uh, well, it's a, well, we're, we're, it's it's different magic at play, I think. But um, oh. yeah, the shadow vault thing, which you'll you can learn more about if you go, you know, uh, talk to people at the Shadow Seminary. The idea behind that is um, this is out of character knowledge, but the idea behind that is the Shadow Court has. The Shadow Court has like reached into the past and maybe even in other dimensions and other places where the Shadow Court operates. And they have they have basically held a particularly particularly important moments in their history, like in a sort of stasis, like, and they can, basically the idea behind the shadow vaults is you you turn the key to the shadow vault, you go in and you try to change that history, you try to ch change that outcome, right? Mm. And um, otherwise the thing that they're holding in stasis just repeats and repeats and repeats, whatever it is. And so the idea is 
once they figure out how to solve the puzzle of what's ever in the vault, they will then, you have the key and go in and be able to go in and like change, change the situation to their advantage, basically. Oh, cool. Yeah. So this is more like, um, this, this is this like, is just some magic. This is <laughs> trap, divine magic. This yeah. Trap is like more, um, yeah, like divine, right? Like not yeah, shadow yeah. court stuff. Yeah, it was just it was just a divine like kind of gotcha. trap essentially. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll go in, and I'll be impressed. <laughs> indeed, indeed, it's about like twenty feet deep. You can just kind of carefully scramble down. Like there's enough there's enough handholds and stuff on the rocks, and you have time, so you know, there's no danger. Um, as long as you as long as you're all careful. You can scramble down to this cave opening. Um, the cave opening stretches forward about like at a, at a pretty low height. It stretches, you kind of have to crawl a little bit for about maybe 10 or 20 feet. And then it kind of like goes up into the opening of the actual like cave system, right? Which kind of fills the space where, the, the, where, where this face is, right? And if you do that, you will... Um, you will find that the space is already lit. Uh, there are braziers hanging with fires that most likely just burn forever, just kind of ever burning fires. And there is a there's a staircase, a narrow, narrow staircase with no rails um, that just goes up this way and then cuts that way and up and zigzags all the way up to the top. Um, pretty narrow. You have to walk single file, and if you if you go a little too far to the left or the right, you're going to go tumbling right off the edge. Okay. Um, think about the order you want to go up in. Think about any preparations you want to make before you head up these sta these steps. Uh, we're going to take a quick two minute break and come back. Okay. Mm -hmm.
All right. Very tall, zigzaggy. Oh, we lost Frazier. We need Frazier to come back. This turned into a really like suddenly very intense and dangerous <laughs> um, <laughs> side mission. All right. So very, very narrow, zigzaggy set of steps that go up to what must be like near the top of the face, you know, like what would be in the, the brain or whatever, right? Who's going first? And are you taking any particular precautions? Um, is it lit all the way through? Enough that you can see like as you like, yeah, you can kind of see that it goes up quite a distance, yeah. Okay. There are braziers hanging at different intervals. Well, I would be willing to go first if uh, Weary backs me up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think the best way Weary can back you up is by going first. That is true. <laughs> yeah. After <Ooh>. you. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder well, who's hitting the flag if, then. If something tries to fight you on the steps, like that'd be really bad because you don't have a lot of like wiggle room. So guys can may not yeah. even be helpful in that way, right? Like because too mm -hmm. much momentum and you're going right off the side, right? So Yeah. Yeah, I think Weary will like especially with the spurring on, I think he'll go first be, especially it makes sense with within the fiction with him having that flashback of like being wary of this place already from what he was told and stuff. Yeah, good. Um, okay, so just heading up. Yep, I'll, I'll be checking for traps. <laughs> <laughs> you can give me a tra trap expert, go for it. I got a 12. All right, ask away as you carefully make your way up the steps. Let's see. Trap expert. Uh, is there a trap here? And if so, what activates it? Um, there is not. There, There is a trap here. Uh, yeah, there's a trap here. You see it. Uh, what activates it is just being on the stairs. And you see it so you can react initially, or you at least know. But up a ways ahead a little bit, up on the steps, um, you see a cobra fall from the darkness of the of the uh, of the cave system, and just kind of like a cobra just falls and lands on the step, and then kind of slithers and falls off further down. Mm. So, so like yeah. so like as you're hitting the pressure points, the it makes like opens something, and then they fall. Mm, it's not, that's unclear. Yeah, there's just oh. okay. Snakes what in does darkness falling from the roof? <laughs> from the ceiling. What does the trap do when activated then? Yeah. <laughs> As you get higher and higher up, more snakes will be falling on top of you to see if you can keep your balance and keep your and have the will to proceed forward. Hmm. Okay. Um, what else is hidden here? Hmm. That's interesting. At the very, very top of the first landing. You, you, you saw it in the distance, and as you're getting closer, you can see what it is. At, at every turn in the steps, there's a little landing uh, that's a slightly bigger space you can stand on. Maybe like one person can kind of stand and, you know, uh, kind of <clears throat> um, stretch out a little bit if they need to. <clears throat> there, are, um, there are small idols or little tiny shrines, basically, dedicated to St. Murian at each landing. And oh. would be a great time to ask for her favor <laughs> climbing these <Ooh>. steps. <laughs> okay. Um, as far as doing the um, tricks of the trade thing, is that possible? Like, is is it a thing that I could figure out? Like this on this one. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I think maybe when I figure out, like as we're making our way and I figure out that this isn't something that can be disarmed, it's just something that you have to brave. I sort of maneuver our structure of moving such that the priest comes upon the idol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And you'll get to the first one before the snakes start falling down on you, right? You'll get to the first little shrine of St. Murian. And the shrine is basically like a little statue of St. Murian. She has her sword in hand and there's a large serpent that she's like clutching by the neck, holding, you know, like she's getting ready to stab it, you know? She's very anti-snake. She's very anti-snake, right? Yeah. Um, is there a way of defying this danger by like discerning the patterns of which they fall and then I could guide people, be like, yeah. go yeah. now, go Yeah, if you wish to press forward, I'll give you guys some options depending on how you describe it to me, but there might oh, be a okay. simpler thing you can do with just like with shrine, right? So. Oh, right, right, okay. I'll think I'll... What you think. Yeah. Okay, so he, uh, he maneuvers things so that Alfar comes upon the shrine and <laughs> just, yeah, like, hey, look. <laughs> and uh, has Weary mentioned anything about the snakes to us at all? I assume. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like when you come, um, like maybe I'll step aside and people will move uh, ahead a little bit until you get to the shrine as well. And then when we're on this outcropping, I can point and show you the snakes falling. And stuff. Okay. And Sorry. I'll say this is one trap that I, I don't know how to, to disarm. Yeah. And um, yeah, uh, Alfar, you know, he was, you know, cries out, you know, it's like, I beseech thee, St. Murian, um, my people worshipped you before we worshipped Alfar, um, and the name, you know, it's like, in honor of, of my people's ancestry, in, in honor of my ancestors, will you protect their, your worshippers' descendants from these snakes? Hmm. Give me a plus wisdom roll. On a 12 plus, you will gain the protection of St. Murian up the stairs for the entire party. On a 10 plus, just for yourself. On seven and nine, just for one person, not you, but you choose who gets it. And on a miss, well, we'll deal with a miss. <laughs> it comes to that. Uh, so that's an 11. Do you have a preparation to spend? Yeah, I'll go ahead and spend a preparation. Okay. Um, and I think uh, with, with the preparation, it will flash back that you know, as he's packing his as he's packing his bags in his you know in his hometown before heading out, he's going you know he's going through things and he's you know taking the the rations that his people have gathered that will make the, that will make the village go hungry actually uh, because they have given him so much. Um, but that um, he takes his. Uh, there is actually an icon of uh, Saint Murian in his uh, in his uh, basically in a in a chest in his room that has been passed a passed down through, throughout his generations. That while his people, you know, that while his family has you know moved on to a different to a different saint to a different god, they've not forgotten where they've come from. So he has the icon of Saint Murian. Murian. Love it. I love it. You have the blessing of St. Murian, at least to get to the top of the steps. <laughs> um, and you you all may see the snakes like actually falling at an increasing rate as you go higher, but they just sort of like fall to the side, almost like a little, it becomes like a waterfall that splits magically and just snakes just fall to the left and to the right, but you are all able to otherwise carefully go up the steps and you get to the top of the steps which lead to um, a bigger significantly bigger like kind of upper cave portion it's pretty good size probably the size of like um like maybe uh like the size of like maybe like the, the area plan of like a house maybe uh but tall but like with a nice high like a roof right and at the far end of this space, you see Legend of Zelda Master Sword style. You see a little plinth with a sword sticking out of the little stone plinth. Kaiska, what do you do? I take out my sword and try to use use inspecting magic at at, <laughs> uh, uh, at on the other sword. Yeah, I like that. Give me a you can you can cast a spell if you want. All right. That's a pen. Nice. As you approach the other sword. And I will pick. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
unwanted attention. That seems like a fine. <laughs> that's, that's a good. It's a good move. Yeah. As you, as you kind of like, you have your sword out, and your power is almost the power of your sword is almost meeting the power of this sword, right? Uh, this sword looks like a. It's a long sword, nice, very beautiful, beautifully crafted blade. The pommel is in the shape of a griffin wrestling with a large serpent, like they're clashed in battle, this griffin and this serpent. And it's but it's shaped so that you can like comfortably hold it, right? Your fingers fall like in the appropriate, you know, like in comfortable spaces within the shape of the griffin and the snake. And you're going to learn as your, because your magic, I assume you're doing the one that peels away the veil, right? Let you see. You're going to learn that this snake or this sword actually uh, provides protection from serpents and has an auxiliary feature, which you're about to learn about right now, <laughs> as you, um, as you, but you know that the sword provides like a certain sort of protection against serpents. That's important. As you are learning all this, as you're sensing this, as you're, you're getting this information, everybody, you see like a flash of light in the air above you in the cave system. And you hear a screech, a loud, like a loud, like echoey, it like hurts your ears, screech, like a war cry of, of like a, of a, of a terrible, terrible, frightening creature that is descending down upon you right now. It's a griffin. Um, there's a griffin just flying down at really fast speed, like from the, from the top, like from the high ceiling area and just coming in. Um, Weary, what do you do? You can't be taken by surprise. Um, I think it's like a the classic dungeon scene where there's um, like maybe everyone's credit around the sword and looking at it and stuff, and Weary's the only one that sort of like cocks his head, <laughs> and there's <laughs> like a scratching sound at first as it like starts to make its way, and I think he'll like knock an arrow and shoot at the noise like when it makes that screech that's the noise that he needs to be able to place it uh, nice, in order nice. to shoot yeah. at it i love that uh that's terrific give me a volley volley hit up let's see uh, a nine okay. um i'm not familiar with volley let's see if ten is that much better or I think nine years to put yourself in danger or take less damage or do less damage or, or reduce ammo. Yeah. Reduce your ammo. Okay. Um, and this prep blasts uh, in how we use it, right? Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Hmm. I think I'll keep it then. So okay. I'll, I'll stick with the mid result. And I think it makes sense in the fiction that I'm putting myself in, in danger because I'm shooting at it. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and roll your damage. Okay. I got a four. Uh, nice. He has one armor, but you still get a good, good solid hit on him. Um, just swoops down, like just screeching. You get the arrow off. Uh, you know, it flies. It hits. Um, and uh, you know, like. Like like it hits him and you know like kind of in the shoulder or the meaty part of his shoulder or whatever, um, he just shakes it off and just like rapidly descending toward you yet again. Um, Elfar, you're nearest and you can tell that this Griffin is about to just fucking pounce on Weary. What do you do? He is uh, Elfar is going to attempt to cast Divine Ward on Weary. Um, I don't think you're gonna have time. I think I think okay. these are split seconds we're talking about. I need a faster action than that. Okay, in which case he will uh, attempt to jump in front of him and slash at the griffin. Nice, nice. Uh, I'll take that as defend if you want. If you're specifically defending him, if not, um, it, can, it can be just hack and slash. Um, I'll go ahead and do a defend. Okay, go ahead. And defend. Uh, let's see. Plus con. Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> um, I rolled a three. 
All right. Uh, I think you jump in the way of the griffin. Griffin's really big, right? It's like the size of a cart. Like it's really big, big animal, um, magical animal. I'm gonna take the fiction for a minute. Mark an XP. You jump in front of of Weary in an attempt to like hold the creature back, stop the creature, do whatever. The creature, being as big as it is, just like basically just slams you both down to the ground. Um, Elfar, you have the claws like ripping into your body. And Weary, you've got the beak and the nasty fucking beak just tearing into you. You both take a D8 plus three. Proper Griffin. All right, and I took eight damage. Okay. How'd you fare, Weary? I took seven damage. Okay. And Archon, what do you do? You're not tackled by a griffin, <laughs> but you are nearby. I can lean back and watch. I could. But there's also this sword, right? Yeah. This interesting I'm imagining sword. the griffins between, like, I'm imagining, like, Geiska is on one side of the griffin with the sword, and Weary and Elvar are with the griffin uh, being ripped apart, and you're on the other side, right? So it's like a one, two, three. Does that make sense? Yeah. Even if I have to bring myself into danger or expose myself to anything here, which could be of danger, I'm straightforward walking to this sword because I want to touch it. I'm a broger and I can bring my senses back into the history of something and learn about it. Mm, good. That's my race move. I like it. That's a, that's a good move. So you're just running, rushing over to you. You can do that. That's fine. Um, mm. uh, it's problematic if, if, if you don't help them while they have a griffin on top of them, just so you know. Uh, but it's okay. Hold that thought. Kaiska, what do you do? I'm going to do the thing that Arkan isn't doing and <laughs> check the griffin. Go for it. Um, I will, uh, I'll give you a free hit since it's currently occupied with, with them. So just roll your damage. All right. It has piercing. Mm -hmm. Just a reminder. And I get a nine. Nice. That kills it. Describe it. I I charge towards the griffin with the sword in hand, and then I stab the griffin. Nice. And it lets I, and as I, yeah. And and as I uh, swing my sword to the side, the griffin falls off the edge of the cliff that we just. Nice. The dead body, at least. <laughs> nice, nice. And I think as it's falling, there's like there's like just a spray of of guts and viscera, kind of like you know spraying out as it falls off your off your sword. Forceful and messy. Indeed, indeed. And yeah, thanks, Gary. I'm glad you picked up on that, Garrett, <laughs> the Angovada thing. Um, that means viscera in German, in case anyone cares. Um, I've, been, I've been playing with it the whole time. Uh, so seemingly OK, Archon, you, you, you have your hands on the sword, and your dwarf move lets you, when you, where is it? What does that? What does it do? What's the dwarf dwarf race move do? You're muted. So, uh, you can read someone's works as well as the one who made them. You may discern realities about someone simply by touching something they have made, be it an item, a place, or an offspring. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, I'm into that. Uh, go ahead and. Um... I'll just give you some information. You can just ask me a question if you want. Any question you wish. I wish to ask. Um, Doesn't have to be from the list either. You can ask me anything. Yeah. Who was the last owner? Apart from Saint Miriam, or. And if it's if, if it was her, then I want to learn something about her. Something oh, okay, which good. is not All right, now. fair enough. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Really interesting, actually. Something. The sword was forged specifically for Saint Murian to to take into battle against her against her war her crusade against these Yuan-Ti. Okay, and that's all great and and true. The difficulty, though, <laughs> is that she actually, in order to do this, she actually had to, in order to get the power in the sword, this power that. She she wanted the sword to have and and to and to give her the power to basically strike against the Dante. She had to actually sort of 
secretly make a pact with a serpent god. And so the sword has a sort of like historical taint on it, right? Um, which is worth worth uh, knowing. So, so there's 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 a it has a dubious nature. There's a there's a duplicitous nature to the sword that is not known to many people. I think Alpha should know. Indeed. Yeah. And before he can step back, I touch him and send it like exactly as I received it to him. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> How far? Hmm. Well, first, are you okay? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you two okay, first of all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Alfar will, um, you know, I don't think he's going to say anything. Um, I think that he already knows. I think that um, his, an his ancestors were, fo were followers of, of this saint, and maybe even, not even just worshippers, but they followed her in their in her war so i think that he already knows well so interestingly he, yeah. yeah it's good and i'd like to just add a little bit of nuance here as far as our broader campaign world there's a there's meant to be a hint a suggestion that saint murian had peeled back the veil on the true nature of the gods in doing this right and so St. Murian herself had some sense that the gods were false and that they're, 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 there's a basic underlying falseness, right? And so this serpent god was maybe just part of that, part of that idea of like, you know, maybe there are no actual gods. Maybe there is no Oron and Lunan. Maybe, maybe we're all just here being pawns of unknowable ancient entities, right? That will do what they will with us. So, do you have any sneaking suspicions in that regard, Elfar? Mm, no. Uh, that, well, that actually um, that actually keys into something. The answer to the a question that you asked me earlier. So, I will say he has considered it, but he does not agree with it. He 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 remains steadfast in his faith. Mm, good. Very good. Do you guys take the sword? And if so, who's holding it? The sneaky sword. Uh, I will take the sword. All right. Taken. Took. You can Took. pull it right out. Just, uh, just note the sword of St. Mirian in your gear. Mm. Oh, I have something to do at Campfire. And we can be done here. Um, we're going to be heading into the town now, and or, you know we'll kind of fast forward in time. You know, a little Before bit. we get something to the, you guys want to do, yeah. Before we get to the town, I want to explain the boss thing with uh, Archon. Oh the yeah, yeah. That's, that's, of... that's what I'm moving. Yeah, that's what I'm moving to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm moving to the questions now. Well, so let's have yours. I mean, answer the question. What have you heard? What rumors? Uh, you can do it in character. Well, you had another know. question for the town, which is the Geminos one. Uh, that one too. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. All right. And, and I already answered the question about the boss of the town. It, right. It's the it's a snake star beast, as far as I know. Yeah. 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 Um, do you? So, what did you want to share with Archon? I guess. Sorry, I back up. Uh, that information because I oh, did okay. not share it with any with the rest of the group. But now that I know that he has the sword that can protect from snakes, I give him this information in case he wants to confront mm. the boss. Mm, good. So yeah, I forgot you hadn't told them before. So that's, yeah, thanks. Um, let's talk about the establishing questions. I'm gonna get those on the table as you guys are kind of moving into into this town. You know, you 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 get back on the back on the right path. You you follow. The river as you need to to get to to, to where all these great rivers meet up um in total you guys lost about a day or so of of, of journey and 
We'll talk about the town momentarily, but what I want to know from each of you, going to the establishing questions, Alfar, tell me about your long, complicated relationship with this local and who is it? Um, so, uh, Alfar's daughter lives in uh, Angivada, um, but uh, she is a, uh, I guess in, in D&D speak, she's a, she's a mole. Uh, Alfar actually took a human wife years ago from a woman who wandered into the village. And so she's half dwarf, half human, and they were very close throughout the, throughout her entire life. However, um, she could pass as a short human, and he had hoped that she would become a priest like him, but instead she went out to live in the human world and not just declined to be a priest of, of Anshar, but he, but actually turned her back on, you know, the, uh, the church in general and, and, but do, and does not believe that the gods exist and believes that it's all a lie. Good, good, good. Uh, do you have a name for that character? Uh, Dahlia. Perfect, thank you. What does Dahlia do in town professionally? Um, I think that... Uh, the more unsavory, I think that the better. I, actually, I think even, even furthering things, I think that she's a food merchant. I think that she... Uh, uh, she she um, she doesn't she doesn't grow anything herself, but she you know buy, uh, buys produce from local farmers and then and then sells it at the market at a profit, which um, Alfar just does not think anything anything of because hunger is a sacrament and and not only that, but she is you know she is not producing anything of her own and she's taking it from the far the farmers so. He loves her very much, but he does not approve of her life choices. Mm, good. Geiska, your sword has whispered to you a clue about Starbeast Geminos and how you will know that Starbeast Geminos is near. Um, what's this clue? Starbeast Geminos is, comes from Gemini, the, mm -hmm. the constellation of the twins. Mm -hmm. The twins are invisible, one of them. The other one is shown in the reflection of mirrors or the water itself. And that's basically how I'll find them. I'll, I'll, uh, I will look through the pool and yeah. see where Starbase so, Geminus is. So if you just happen to like observe someone with a reflection that doesn't match their own reflection or shows the correct. other person, yeah, that's good. Yeah, okay, good. correct. Yeah. I love it. That's perfect. Uh, thank you. Archon, tell me about this spirit that exists beneath Angavada. Well, the my people, the Brogas, they, we still don't know like what was their role in the past, but there must have been a time they traveled a lot. And they have also been in Angavada. Mm. What they brought there was a, like a present. They put it underground, and it's an evil spirit, and its name is Heligo Helicobacter. Uh, put, put that so, in the chat for me. <laughs> I, yeah, I will do so. And it um, comes from the realm of the creature, of the violet creature of suffering. It's also in the, in the notes, by the way, in the different places. Um, well, Helicobacter it's interesting that it feeds from the emotional suffering of the inhabitants of Eingeweide. It calms their suffering. They suffer less. People in this town suffer less from emotional problems. However, it causes stomach cancer in exchange. Interesting. Slowly. Not for all of them, but it's much more likely to get stomach cancer in this town. And well, it's, it's a medieval time, so nobody exactly knows what's going on, but something in the stomach is going wrong. Interesting, maybe for people who believe in gods of hunger and food and that stuff. Or what, mm -hmm, what? Indeed, yeah. So ever. Yeah, and I want to talk with this evil spirit to learn about the history of Eingeweide. Good. Awesome. I love it. All right. Thank you. Weary. There's a shadow seminary in Eingeweide. One of the very few, like, kind of open, like you can just go to it <laughs> and knock on the door and say hi. Um, 
what business do you have there? Um, I think that the business is that my old master uh, presides there now. Oh, okay, good. By the way, who has the key? The vault key? Yeah, who has the vault key? Um, Did you just keep um, it here? Or? Yeah, maybe I just kept it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think if if guys got uh, kept it, then we just stole it from him, probably, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, like stickily, <laughs> just take it and then. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Well, so what's what's the name of your old mentor? Um, it should have a. It should be a, a one word nickname, right? We've established that in the fiction. Right. Um, maybe just order. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Do you need to speak to him to order for any particular purpose, or you just want to just reconnect? Um, I think that with all the, like, I think what happened in the beginning with Archon deconstructing his defenses in the mind um, mm. and the truths like slowly tumbling out from that, he wants to confront order and mm. uh, like sort of be like cut those ties and become yeah. more free. Yeah, I love it. That's great. I want to take a quick break, but before we, uh, just a real quick break and then have like a scene or two when we get back. But before we cut for the break, I want to, I want to paint the scene. I want you guys to think about this. I want to paint the scene of Ainga Vida, which is as you enter the town, you see things all around you that let you know that this town is a not a good place. Um, there are a lot of like bad trade going on. Uh, lots of residents who don't look normal, maybe even monstrous. There's just a sort of pall of, of like bad feeling that hangs over this town, okay? And in particular though, it does serve a purpose though in the world. I mean, this is a place where you go to acquire things that aren't meant to be acquired things that are that are bad things that are illicit that are taboo i want to just know from each of you something that you see as you as you walk through the streets of ayangavada like what you see that like lets you know this or reinforces this idea um let's just like take a quick bio break okay
All right. Weary, what do you see? As you um, walk I the streets, the dreary streets of Angolana. Yeah, I think it's um, in part um, that uh, what's her, the the reason why she doesn't grow any of her own uh, food is because she can't here. Like the land is mostly dead or like not fruitful anyway. Like not fruitful like enough that. to grow. Yeah, so there's like green spaces, but they're sort of like timber esque looking things. <laughs> Interesting. Melfar, what do you see? I think um, Alfar just sees, you know, just everybody walking through the street just looks sick and, and just kind of building off, I guess, what um, Archon said is that there's just a lot of people walking the streets, you know, clutching their stomachs in pain, and every alley seems to have somebody vomiting in it, and just everyone just seems, you know, not physically fit. Mm -hmm. Guys, go, what about you? I see a conversation between a, an elf and a human. Mm -hmm. The elf is threatening the human to... Well, not threatening. He says he wants the human's jaws payment for something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, Gaiska doesn't <laughs> doesn't want to know more about that. <laughs> I imagine not. I imagine not. Archon, what about you? Eingeweide, because they are quite stomach focused. Yes, it I happens. Know. It happens to be polite to defecate together when you have a conversation Good. you usually clean your stomach yes. uh, also whenever you feel the need you defecate directly on the street like it's completely normal because cleaning your stomach is the most important thing here mm, nice and if you're like important meeting with the mayor so you sit there together holding your arms and press it out Nice, nice. I feel like we're getting a steady ramp up in the gruesomeness and the vileness of this place. Let me add something to the milieu here. There is, in the center of town, a butcher. A butcher that does his business on a scaffolding, open air, um, you can just walk by and there are various meats and things dangling from, from, you know, little, little, little rails. And some of the pieces of meat that are hanging look like thighs and arms um hanging from the from the little the little tracks mm -hmm. and this butcher is um he's singing a happy song as he butchers in the middle of this basically in the middle of the square right like you, and, and everyone's walking around like it's just no big deal he is wearing a big heavy white apron uh big like thick like gloves that go up to his elbows um and importantly a little a little mask a little like sort of comical cartoon pig mask right with a big like smile and big blue eyes um and a little crooked ear it would be cute in any other context and he's singing a delightful song about the joys of the joys the delicious uh properties flavor or otherwise that come from that come from the various types of flesh that are available in the world and so he says you know you know uh, a little song about well you eat dwarf meat if you need to be if you need to be strong of constitution you know and if you're going down into the dark right there's a verse about that as he sings this very, very upbeat song. Everyone else, pick a civilized race and tell me what's wonderful about eating that meat. Based off the song. Do 
human meat is Maybe. very good if you need to keep a secret. Human meat, good if you need to keep a secret. I like that. I what that about Knowles if you want to be happy and funny? <laughs> <laughs> good, well, good, good. It goes well together. Yeah. Elf meat helps you appreciate the trees around you. <laughs> Halfling meat is very tender and helps you enjoy your food more. It is a delicacy that you, it's like wine. You, you sit with wine to accentuate the taste of everything else. Uh, Jason, you're muted, if anything. Yes, and he <laughs> saved the last verse, the halfling verse, for a reason, because that's what he's got on the menu, boys. And he, he pulls out of a sack. Um, you think it's like a pig because of like the crying and squealing coming out of the sack, but it's not. It is, it's a little halfling being held up by his little hairy foot and ankle. Um, still got his little green cloak and everything. And kicking around, flailing around, his hands are bound. And he just takes this little halfling and kind of like slumps him, slaps him onto, onto like the slab right there in front of everybody and just raises up his big fucking cleaver and the bidding is beginning immediately for the different body parts. I'll have the foot, I'll have the shoulder, you know, that kind of thing of various people. You, you notice now some orcs, some some humans as well, some, some lots of unsavory types kind of gathering around while this halfling like cries out. That smiling pig face above him, right? With the cleaver in hand, ready to come down. I think we'll just cut there. So, good session. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Uncomfortable laughter, yes. <laughs> uh, how about flags? How flags go? Everybody hit flag. Oh, flags? If you think you hit a flag, I think, just call it out. I think, um, what's, we and Alpha uh, hit my get into a dangerous situation that I can protect you from. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Whether they intended to or not. <laughs> that, sounds like, uh, that sounds like XPs for the two of you. Um, any other flags we believe got hit? Well, I was helpful by letting you do it, right? I was in between. <laughs> but no, let's, I find something else. I, I noticed um, two people were setting me into danger at the same that's time. That's a true story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that's a true story. Yes. Um, I, I mean, we should go first and alone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Archon, that sounds like a mark for Archon, at least. I remember yeah. that conversation coming up in that context. Uh, what about uh, the only person who hasn't gotten XP yet is Geiska. Did Geiska hit anybody's flags? No, I don't think so. Let's take a look. I think we need more role playing scenes. I think there was a lot of action in there this. There was a lot of action in that one. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see. I thought this, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to look, I'm trying to think of things like happen because sometimes it happens, you don't realize it, right? Because it's kind of buried in your, you do it because you, it's buried in your subconscious. Um, da, 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 da. believe a lie, I've told you. Did you maybe point out a forbidden place, uh, for Archon with the sword? I don't think so. You guys knew what you were there to do. Yeah. No, I pointed out the that the snake person is the boss of, uh, I. No, that's yeah, that's actually. Let's see here. And what the frig was the name? Whose flag was that <laughs> supposed to be, or whose flag are we? Angie Wide. Uh, well, Arkham would get the experience. Oh, with, oh, because it, oh, because it's no. your flag. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, yeah. Well, I, no, no, no. Uh, the forbidden place is his flag. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm. I was stuck, and. Um, also get me to speak of my life beyond our mission? Not really. Yeah, that didn't really happen. Yeah, I, I, yeah it's okay, that's all right. Um, but yeah. uh, Jessica, what you did was you told me and only me about uh, the this, this star I beat and its yeah. connection to snakes to make me aware that the sword could bring me there. So you pointed out a forbidden place to get your hands on it, which is my flag. 
That is fair. Yeah, yeah I think it did because it is kind of how it shook out, right? As I recall. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. that XP. That sounds good to me. Um, let's go here. Let's see here. Bar alignment, rather. Upset relationship to see what happens. I, Archon, you totally did that. <laughs> um, you yeah. totally did that with the with the snake. Uh, with yes, with our farm is God, right? Yeah. So yeah. mark an XP. It was a good scene too. Uh, guys, good. defend those weaker than you. Yes, mark an XP. Yes. Weary, uh, <laughs> weary what is yours? Destroy a symbol of the church. Oh, got it. Um, you kind of did. Uh, you definitely plundered. Um, you, you're doing a thing the church wouldn't approve of right now, so I'll take that. Mark an XP. Um, and Elfar, endanger yourself following the priest. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So um, <laughs> go ahead and mark yeah. an XP there. Yeah, everyone, everyone like hit the shit out of their alignments <laughs> this session. It was a good, it was a good alignment session. Um, did we learn something new and important about the world? Uh, yeah, yeah. The whole thing with with Saint Murian was really fun. Everybody mark an XP. Did we overcome a notable monster enemy? Uh, yes, I think uh, the whole sequence in the cave was really good. So mark an XP. Yeah, and yeah. did we loot a memorable treasure? Yes, the sword. Yes, the sword. Yeah, so good. I. Great. Uh, I'm going to stop the broadcast.